Thank you, Pastor, for your kind words and for your inspiration and for allowing me to stand behind this sacred pulpit. The trust that you place in me is astronomical, and I endeavor never to let you down, never to let the Holy Spirit down, never to let my God down. And now let the Lord's of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. We don't need another hero. This is a theme from Mad Max 3, the movie Beyond Thunderdome. It was also a popular song sung by Tina Turner. The theme of the movie is an ex-police officer burned out, played by Mel Gibson, before the fall, his personal fall, who was once a great authority figure in, the wor in his world, so much so that he even drove the last V8 interceptor in a world where gas gasoline and power was a great commodity. He was once cock of the walk, and now a raggedy man. He must try to survive in a post-apocalyptic world. While he's on his journey, he is hijacked. His wagon and all his possessions are stolen. He's left to wander the wasteland, where he comes across a city of sorts called Barter Town. Barter Town was run by the ruthless ant entity played by Tina Turner, whose only qualifications to lead were that after the crash of civilization, she was alive. And sometimes that's all it takes to be in charge, is to justify, just survive whatever happened. Barter Town was as wicked and as dangerous as it could be, run by the simplest of rules, really only two. When it comes to business, bust a deal and face the wheel. The wheel was loosely based on a wheel of fortune. On this wheel were all the choices you could imagine, everything from death to exile and all things in between. When it comes to personal disputes, if two people cannot agree, they are sent to Thunderdome. Where two men enter, one man leaves. And just so you get the full picture, once you're in Thunderdome, you can't break any rules. There aren't any. Now this barter town sounds a lot like some parts of Framingham, doesn't it? This is a sermon done not so much in three parts, but three voices. The song, out of the ruins, out from the wreckage, can't make the same mistake this time. We are the children, the last generation, we are the ones they left behind. And I wonder if we're ever going to change, living under the fear to nothing else remains. The chosen people of God, the Israelites, have been liberated from their oppressors, the Egyptians. The Most High God has heard the cries of his people and sent a liberator, one given the power to perform miracles, one who has the power to alter the metaphysical structure of the basic elements, such as water, which he changes to blood, wood, which he changes to snakes, He's even allowed to call darkness from broad daylight. All of these signs, plus seven others, are designed to show a pharaoh whose mind is so twisted that he thought he was God. He thought he had the right to control the Hebrews. And God is going to show him the truth. Moses is a most unlikely leader, one who was hidden as a child from a mass killing 
ordered by the same Pharaoh of all the Hebrew boys only to be adopted into the royal family, the very royal family that was oppressing God's people. This one slow of speech, this murderer, yes, we forget that Moses was a murderer, and a little bit of a coward, because he ran and hid. This one slow of speech, this murderer, this is the one that God is going to call through a burning bush. The chorus, we don't need another hero. We don't need to know the way home. All we want is life beyond the Thunderdome. If you turn in your Bibles with me to Exodus chapter 14, starting at verse 5, I can assure you I will not be before you long. As I was taught, if you let the word speak, you don't have to. Now it was told the king of Egypt that the people had fled. And the heart of Pharaoh and his servants was turned against the people. And they said, why have we done this? Why have we let Israel go from serving us? You can sit. It's okay. You can sit. When your heart is not right, Satan takes the opportunity to cause all the evil in your soul to completely destroy you. There is no sane reason why that you would pursue the people of God after you know God has caused nine plagues plus one so devastating, so horrendous that he allows you to pick it. And in so doing, kill all the firstborn of your own people. This would seem to be truly a victory for Satan. But God will ultimately have his way in your life, even unto death. Back to the word. So he took, so he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. You see, he was so angry that he must pursue the Israelites himself. So it's clear that not only through his madness is he about to kill himself, but others as well. Verse 7, also he took 600 choice chariots and all the chariots of Egypt with the captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh king of Egypt. Now this sentence, this verse right here, has been the cause of much controversy. How could the Lord harden the heart of somebody? We must understand that whenever you read the Lord hardened the heart of, all the Lord is doing is confirming the heart that is already there. Pharaoh's heart was set against the people. The verse says earlier, as it was read so wonderfully, that this Pharaoh knew not Joseph. That means he did not know the God of Israel. He didn't take time to understand the history. He didn't search out. He didn't know God. He didn't want to know God. He thought he was God. So when he set his mind to do something, God said, okay, you want to do it? <laughs> Go ahead and do it. But once you put your hand on that oven, once you stick your hand in that coal, once you step out in front of that train, I'm not going to save you. You're going to stand right there. So whenever you see harden the heart, he just confirmed the heart of Pharaoh. And he pursued the children of Israel back to the word. And the children went out of Israel with boldness. So the Egyptians pursued them and all the horses and the chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them camped by the sea beside Phi 
Herothoth, before Baal Zephon. And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were very afraid. And the children of the Israel cried out to the Lord, and they said, Moses. Then they said to Moses, because there were no graves in Israel, it, there were no graves, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? The songwriter picks it up, looking for something we can rely on. There's got to be something better out there. Love and compassion, their day is coming. All else are castles built in the air. And I wonder when we're ever going to change. Living under the fear till nothing else remains. See, we would say, how could the Israelites so quickly forget what the Lord God has done in freeing them? How could they forget the love and compassion shows them? Let's not forget that even though the Egyptians had made them slaves, it was because of their own ancestors' rebellion that caused them the pain they were experiencing. See, a while back, God had said to the Israelites and told them, if you only do what I tell you to do, everything would be fine. But they continued as they grew mighty, as they got this and got that, they continued to see themselves as what was important. So as they got closer to their stuff, to their things, you might say they got one new car, then they got another new car, then they got a house and a bigger house. As they got close, they saw their stuff and their things and they stopped looking for God. And as they stopped looking for God, God said, okay, if that's what you want, you can have it. And now they're slaves. How many people... Would be honest and don't raise your hand because no folk don't need to know your business. How many people would be honest with me and say they are in the situation they are in because they wanted it, they got it, Toyota. I raised my hand. <laughs> Thank God for one honest sister. <laughs> Not being able to build something for yourself. For your family because you are a slave and your life your desires mean nothing to them that enslave you but on the one hand you have your life you have your health you have your strength you're able to pray to work and you have a family but on the other hand it's not real nothing is real because you your family and all your friends your very nation are slaves. A long time ago, your ancestor did something that caused all this. They turned their back on God. And now you and your family and your nation pay the price. You see, turning away from God always has a cost. And somebody must pay. And now this man comes into town and he says, God, the God that you've been praying to for freedom, for deliverance, just to get the, 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 those Egyptians off your back, has heard you and has sent him to free you. And not just you, your family and your nation. So you follow him. But it's... Been no bed of roses and no preser clues. They didn't even have time to pack properly. The songwriter says, all the children say, we don't need another hero. We don't need to know the way home. All we want is life beyond the Thunderdome. So here we are at the edge of the Red Sea. We are trapped. Pharaoh's army approaches, and we are sure to die. I guess there were not enough graves in Egypt, so here we die. This God 
that Moses talks to, he says that God has a plan. And we're just going to walk across the sea on dry land. Still, I wish I could believe. Have you ever had a Red Sea moment? Have you ever been where that Israelite was? Wondering if all you had been told is real. You understand that life is not going to be a bed of roses, but all you seem to be getting is the thorns. Okay, sometimes I can be a little cute. So enough of that. Let's just say times are hard. And nothing seems to be going your way. And you pray, oh my God, how you pray. And nothing seems to be doing any good. Your yoke, <clears throat> excuse me, is not easy. And your burden doesn't appear to be light. And now you stand at the river's edge. And Satan's army, having chased you to the very brink of destruction. Now it is time for God to show up. To step in to deliver you in spite of your doubts. In spite of your fears. To do what only he can do and make a way out of no way. And you, you stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. The songwriter says, so what do we do with our lives? We leave only a mark. Will our story shine like a light or end in the dark? Give it all or nothing. The word of God says in Exodus 14, verse 21, Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind, and all that night, and made the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided, so that the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground. And the waters were like a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went after them into the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses and all his men and his horsemen. You see, when he stretched forth his staff, the walls of water that were once blocking them showed them the way. And the path that they walked was dry ground. When the walls, when the water that is in front of you becomes your path, you need to walk it. And go quickly because the sea was open but for a night. And in the morning, death followed the very light. Not only did God make a way for his people, but he did, in such, he did it in such a way that there could be no doubt that it was him at the rescue. Moses, when he raised his, sa his staff, the waters of the Red Sea separated. Moses was a man listening and acting by the will of the God to free the people of God. No, no. We don't need another hero. We have the power. You see, we have the Holy Spirit. And he will guide you to all truth. We have the name of Jesus that we can call on at that moment when all the demons in your life will tremble and flee. But you have to stand still, people. You have to stop running to your own destruction. You need to stand still and call on the name of Jesus. Make him truly Lord of your life. Stand still and call on the name of Jesus. And then when you stand still, then you can walk. Walk in his glory. Walk in his might. Walk across those rivers that trapped you and pinned you down. Walk right through those enemies that had chased you. See, that means you turn. When you're chased, you're running away. But when you walk in the light, you turn and you face them. And you go back right through them in the power of the Lord. Walk. 
in the promise that he would never leave you or forsake you. Walk in the victory of Jesus. Walk. Moses was a man called to do a job. He was human with all the frailties, fears, and doubts, and egos of a man until he talked to God and was strengthened. Then he was able to lead a movement to free a people to give a law, a law that is still in use today, although it's controlled by grace, all by the leading, the guidance, and the voice of the Lord. He was not a hero. He was a servant. You be a servant, and you will have the victory. We don't need another hero. We know the way home. We're just waiting for Jesus the Christ to come and take us to his own. Amen. Okay, let us stand.